welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's episode of Thinking Outside the Pod. I'll be your host this week. My name is Patrick, and I'm joined by my very two good friends. Jimmy and Fisher. Yep. Right. Jimmy and Fisher. Yep. We got oh. the whole crew here today. All I right, guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too enthusiastic right. about it. <laughs> Yay. Um, there was a, this week I wanted to touch some, on some subjects that, uh, that, that, you know, this last week, Discovery Channel had the whole shark week um, all week. I remember, you know, every year they have this about the end of mid to end of August. Um, and I've, you know, whatever little time I do spend watching TV, I've honestly flipped back and forth to it. But I've always flipped back to Discover to see what's going on on it. Um, this year, it just kind of killed my uh, Shark Week buzz, like hardcore. <laughs> like, it just kind of really bothered me, some of the stuff I was seeing on Shark Week. Where, like, as before, you would see shows about, like, new things they've learned about sharks or like you know hypothesis or, th or theories that they're going out into the ocean to test mm -hmm. uh this year it's more like oh i survived the shark attack and then the next show right after it's like i saw i survived the shark attack part two you know yeah. and it's like they're just showing all these people getting attacked by sharks and the awful things that happened to them yeah that's, um, that's what i remember from shark week uh i used to a couple of years ago they, they did like mythbusters specials of 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 shark week and they test like if you punch a shark in the nose it'll go away and things yeah, like that Yeah, you were telling me about and this. and those were the kind of shows i really liked and then like the the next year after that they were like we're not going to do it anymore because we've we've it's played out so i was like all right well that's about I, I watched like the next one it was about shark attacks and stuff i'm like this isn't as interesting as yeah. what it used to be so i i've stopped watching it so I've I've I have I haven't seen any of this this year's. It's kind of a letdown. Like one of the things that the Mistbusters, uh, the crew, that other guy with the little beard, not a uh, Jamie or Savage, Tori, the, the one of the dude with like the spiky hair and he's got like a little goatee. Tori, Tori, and then the chick, the female, Carrie, um, and them Grant. and the little Chinese guy. <laughs> they, <laughs> <Grant>. <laughs> wow, Grant. Tori, the Grant, and Carrie, the little but. Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I didn't, see, I didn't say Chinaman or anything like that. Come on, <laughs> he just did. Well, yeah. not towards him. I'm just saying. <laughs> you guys know who I'm talking about, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Grant. Grant. Grant, Grant like Imahara. Grant Imahara. I'm Imahara. sorry. Imahara. 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 You're probably not even Chinese. I apologize. Um, regardless, they have them, like, on the commercial breaks, in between commercial breaks, like, Super Mastodon Jaws. No, 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 wait. What was it called? Megalodon. You know, let's see the crush power of his teeth. And they put, like, boats and shit in his mouth and, like, they let him just crunch it like the robotic shark crunch it with the teeth. And then they put it out. It spits it out. And they're like, oh, it was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only time that I've seen them this year. And they maybe, do, like, like the last promos. two or three years. Yeah. Just, like, little throwaway promos. Like, man, mm -hmm. come on, dude. And I, I never yeah. thought about it until you said that. Like, it's kind of played out now. Yeah, I mean... Well, when you think of it, there's only so much that you can do. I mean, you know, what yeah. other myths are you going to, you know, do? I mean, Let's see if brown sugar keeps sharks away. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just start like, making, yeah. making shit up. Making myths up. Myths I mean, up. yeah. I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's like, you know, there's only so many ways you can punch a shark. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, on the on the point that Jimmy, well, what, what Jimmy just said, making shit up, the, um, the whole thing about some of the documentaries that Discovery Channel has put out, put out, put out as of late, they're kind of losing a whole section of scientists, man. Like, scientists are kind of starting to get fed up with this stuff because of some of it, a lot of it is lies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, about two or three years ago, there was a documentary that they released about mermaids. And um, I'll get the exact date that uh, they, posted, they put it out there. But the whole thing was is that um, the... These two kids at the on the coast, uh, they took some video footage on, like, a little shitty cell phone, and they were messing around, and they find, like, some we uh, whales beached up, and then, uh, like, pilot whales or some beluga whales, something like that. So they're walking around, like, just, like, yeah, checking it all out. Like, kind of, It's kind of really creepy-looking video. So um, as they're going through all this stuff, they find this net with what appears to be, like, a half of a woman, like, from the torso up, you know, mm -hmm. and her arm is over. And it kind of looks like just, like, a heap of nothing until they get a little closer and then they notice that there's like this weird looking fish tail behind her so the kid starts poking it with a stick and he's like oh what is that you know and then at the last minute he's like see her jump up and like scare the kids and then you just see the cell phone like start doing Blair Witch mm -hmm. Project <laughs> and they're running away yeah well they did a whole um, like legitimate looking episode with these two gentlemen that swear they found a mermaid underwater I just showed you guys a little footage of the, like, a clip of the footage mm -hmm. that they have on this show. Yeah. And what bothers me is that they set it up to be, like, a real show. Like, these two, like, say I get you guys, 
hey man, you guys discovered mermaids and this is what you guys need to do. So then you just just be as convincing as possible. And then I sit across the table from you. I'm like, so what did you do when you saw that mermaid? You know? Yeah. Uh, I was scared. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> random hand just popped out of the wall. Mine blew. And that was crazy. Yeah, this last clip that I showed these guys, there was uh, some deep surveillance, underwater surveillance team. They're searching the bottom of the ocean for something or another. The guy's panning around with one of the cameras, and the other guy's staring into, like, I guess, which was, what are those things called that the submarines used? Periscope? Oh, periscope. periscope. He's, like, looking in this periscope type thing, and he's, like, smiling and, like, looking around with the light. And then all of a sudden, like, this hand comes up, like, it bumps into the windshield and then pushes off and swims away so fast. Mm-hmm. But like all you see is like from the elbow to the tip of the fingers. You yeah, never like see the rest webbed of it. fingers and hand. And they, they did the whole thing on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just Discovery's version of reality shows. <coughs> shows that you mean like unreality? Yeah, yeah, that aren't reality, but reality, and and they're just trying to get some of those kind of viewers that like that kind of stuff that are that or I want I don't want to say dumber people that'll believe like that that that's real. But kind of just that section of the audience that likes that kind of crazy stuff. Well, at first I saw the videos and I thought it was it was really cool. And then after the more I watched it, the more, you know, like after you watch it a year later, you realize the technology they use to create the effects for that stuff is like dated. So you can honestly like tell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's passing it off as real is ridiculous. They can they can still say like this is this is a, a video. This is like a like a dramatic reenactment or reenactment or something or just kind of make it this is what it would look like if there were mermaids they can go that route and i think it'd be the same it'd be better better than yes faking it it's like those those uh science specials where they they're like yeah this is what the alien worlds like might rising, look like sure mm-hmm. yeah like that would be an interesting documentary or history of mermaids and how like old sailors used to think like man- manatees were mermaids and things yeah, like yeah. that go through the history of it like that i that'd be interesting kind of i've probably even seen watch like documentaries like that I have on, like a history documentaries like, like history channel things like that but get some recent science like some new scientists i'm a big time about history it. channel buff dude i love that station too there's only a couple stations i watch but maybe like four of them yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I don't watch TV that much, but yeah, it's Discovery, History, Comedy Central. Really Comedy like Central. The sports Center is my added one. To yeah, that. I'm not much into sports, so. Uh, Foster, what do you usually watch? Like usually just Adult Swim and Discovery Channel. I mean, what uh, what what channel is Adult Swim on? Cartoon Network. Oh, yeah, I Cartoon was trying Network. to get him to say it. That's cool though. Well, I like Cartoon Network too. Actually, I used there's, to like, there's uh, actually a few good shows. Like Archers on Cartoon Network, right? No, FX. 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 Um, how about? That's pretty much all I'd watch. Johnny Bravo. That no, was on Cartoon, Cartoon Network, Network was way well, back in the day. Well, say you said Adult Swim. They have um, Liquid Television on there now, right? I haven't watched it in a while. So do I, you I remember uh, Aeon Flux was a cartoon on HBO or Showtime? I have heard of it. HBO, I think, or MTV. Yeah. I think it was on MTV. Oh, no, yeah, it was on MTV. And it was a Liquid Television was what it, is what it was called, and Aeon Flux was like a segment on there. Like a I know the movie. Show. I mean, show. With uh, Charlize Theron. Yeah. She's hot. Yeah, I don't think that movie did well, but I I, I like I like science fiction. Like Lucy, I don't. That's <laughs> I think Scarlett Johansson is hot as. Of course, French. yeah, it's good to look at. <laughs> well, not when she's being a freaking robot. Yeah, I guess so. The more trailers I watch of that, the worse it gets. But I digress. Anyways, <laughs> um, all over online you can find stories. If you go, if you just go to Google and Google Shark Week or negative Shark Week um, mm-hmm. responses. You can find a whole list of people that are just saying, like, dude, Shark Week is done for, man. Like, yeah. some of the stuff they've done lately, they just, there's no going back to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I saw a headline. Didn't read the story, but it was like, Shark Week has jumped the shark. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's just, it's done with. It's, 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 like I said, just going off after that, uh, like the last people they can get. And this, well, the people that watch TV still, the people that like reality TV. Yes, dude. There's a, a website here. Um, www.thewire.com uh, um, that has a story here about Shark Week. Uh, one of the quotes on it says, first launched in 1988, Shark Week was Discovery Channel's very first week-long event designed to fulfill viewers' thirst for, to, to, uh, for knowledge about the natural world and use the time between traditional television seasons to draw attention to the still young network. Last year, Discovery Channel faced criticism for its Shark Week special Megalodon, the monster shark that lives in which actors pretended to be scientists that searched for a 60 foot seven, a 67-foot shark that's been extinct for millions of years. 
And then it has a tweet from David Schiffman. It says, guys, if there was a 50-foot predatory fish that lived in the shallow coastal water, someone would have fucking seen one. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it's it's kind of hard. There could be things out there. I mean, we just discovered the that giant We only we theorized that there was a giant squid out there, but we've never got photographic evidence until fairly recent. I like think it's a probably a few been, years back. Been, yeah. It's been, been a few years, but still, I mean, that's a huge giant squid that we ha- ha- weren't able to be seen until recent so there could be something big out there well i mean they, they discovered like the the whale shark not too long ago then like after they discovered that they discovered that big ass basking shark with like the giant mouth yeah yeah so it it's possible that it's oh, out the, there the, but it's the pygmy it's just, right whales that's another one i watched this a lot of shark week this year <laughs> yeah it's it's i i i don't say i can't say that it's not out there even like mermaids possibly could be real like you don't know it's there's a lot of weird stuff in the ocean so yeah, and so. it's not all been discovered of course so you never know but it, it's faking faking like with stupid cgi effects isn't gonna it's it's just gonna make you look stupid well which brings me to this next point which is that the the same style narrative um interview that they did for the mermaid special they ran one this last season which just just this last week it's called um Megalodon, um, the after show, or like where they sit down and talk to the scientists who are involved in it. Well, that's the other thing is that in, in the video of the Megalodon thing, at the end of it, they're like searching for Megalodon. They have this big fake uh, whale decoy. They chum the hell out of the water around it, and then they have a cage in the water next to the to the, the decoy whale. So um, that night, um, they start hearing like something starts happening in the water. So everybody starts like moving around. You see the the camera get all excited. Um, the camera follows these two divers into the water, this female and this male, this woman and this man. They get into like a little, um, those little like inflatable boats with an engine on it, okay. like a raft type thing. And mm-hmm. they, they split from the boat over towards where the, the decoy is with the cage. Mm-hmm. They get into the water and they both climb into the cage. And, uh, you know, it's real murky water. You see the camera shaking a lot or whatever. And um, they, they, uh, the guys are like, all right, we got something, we got something. And you see the guys all running into the, the control room of the, the bigger ship. And it goes to commercial, like when, when they, like the ship seems to have been hit by something. Mm-hmm. So it's like trying to build suspense. So, I, like, it had me hooked. I was like, all right, I got to stay here and watch what the hell's going <laughs> to happen. <laughs> so um, a few minutes later, from, you know, I'm going and getting some ice cream. I'm, like, eating beef jerky and even though I probably shouldn't because, like, pepper beef jerky and Rocky Road does not mix very well. <laughs> but um, Teriyaki jerky. You maybe. Got ter- the, sweet, the sweet one, right? The, that would have probably been okay. Yeah, man. Well, the teriyaki <laughs> ice cream. We should have oh. that shit. No, actually, I think that already is. Yeah? Has been. Yeah. Oh. Any Japan, ice cream man. under the sun, you know. Yeah, any flavor. Stick you know, it in the there. Chinese people or who you say? Japanese. The Chinese. It's all Jap- food network. The Japs. You have to watch those competitive cooking. The, the Asians show. from Japan. Doesn't have to be that. I mean, even the American ones, they put they have bacon they ice have cream like and stuff. Bacon ice cream. There is bacon ice cream. That is you a real thing. They have thing. like sushi ice cream. Probably, I, I probably bet somebody's tried it. Like, like there's raw fish like ice cream. wasabi uh, Kit Kats. Wasabi are a thing. So I've never tasted them. Huh. I, yeah, I was saying I Japanese. Want to, yeah, they've got all sorts of weird candies and stuff oh. like that. So I mean. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, I, I get okay, back from my ice cream. Let's go back to. I'm getting back from my ice cream break. I'm in my underwear going back to my bed. <laughs> so, anyways, TMI. Sorry, guys. So, um, I've been scarred enough already. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I'm getting back into bed, um, aiming the fan at me. I'm turning up the television because it's coming back from commercial break. And uh, the guys are in the water, the guy and that, that woman are in the water in the cage. And um, they're starting to like, look around like crazy. And everybody's like, what's going on? It's like, we don't have any signal. We can't communicate. You know, like, it's like pandemonium chaos. So right before the next commercial break, guess what happens? All of a sudden, uh, the ship gets hit again really hard, and everybody's, like, thrown over. So when they get back up, and they're looking, like, we don't have any signal. And they go out to the the deck of the boat, and they put the lights back there, and the whale uh, decoy is missing, and the cage is gone. Mm. And everybody's like, oh, shit. You know, like, not oh, shit, but like, oh, what the hell happened? Where's the cage, and where's the people, Mm -hmm. and where's the decoy? Everything's gone. So then a few minutes later, they're moving the light, and they find the woman come up. You know, they see her over there. So they, the little boat, the they drop them off, goes over and picks her up. And then they comes back around, and they pick up the dude. And, like, in between the shots of this stuff, they have, like, the woman sitting down, and she's like, I was scared for my life, you know. And then you see, like, the profile shot and then, like, the, the close-up <laughs> shot. She's like, I just didn't want to be in the water anymore. There was something huge in there with us. And then the same thing with the guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was awful. 
So it comes back from commercial, and then they find like the oh, like this, like yeah, they come back from commercial, and they find the cage, and that's where like those two people are, like floating around the cage area, and then uh, the show ends, and he's like, well, we still don't have any evidence that Megalodon exists because we didn't have the hardcore proof we wanted, we didn't see it, <laughs> yeah, but so we know like, something's out there. Yeah. <laughs> like you wasted, <laughs> of you wasted an hour of my life, Discovery yes. Channel. Yes, man, and I mean that's why people get so upset. You know, how would you feel if you were me? And I mean, you were sitting there. I, I could have gone to bed last night at one o'clock in the morning, but instead, I stayed up until two watching this shit. <laughs> like, well, that's <laughs> your choice. Well, yeah, oh, but yeah. I mean, it made a convincing point until the end of it. And I was like, dude. And then when I saw the after special, I just turned off the TV. I, I was done. Yeah, <laughs> I was really done, dude. Well, yeah, those, like I said, those editors and producers on those on those types of shows know how to get people hooked. So Man. it's an art form. I guess. See, it's stuff like that where it's like, you know, I, you know, I, I like to see hard proof on this kind of stuff before, I, you know, I like, I, I don't, you know, I, I believe in plausibility, but you know, I don't believe that that is, you know, fact, you know, cause, uh, it's actually heck in Houston, uh, a bef- little bit before I left, they uh, had a Sharknado. No, we had actually, um, this guy who, uh, he quote unquote found Bigfoot. Oh yeah, that guy was making some rounds. He and had the, the body with him. Yes, and you know what's even sadder? That was the second time he's done this. <laughs> oh, second time, no. and people still kind of were like, "Oh, he finally found Bigfoot." It's like, are you, are you kidding me? This is the second time he scammed people out of money. I and think like, Bigfoot is a bear on two feet, a big ass bear on two feet that people see and like freak out, like in the dark, you know, and then they like run off because they think it's Bigfoot. But it's actually I mean, just you know, a bear. I, I have no idea. You know, could something like that exist? Sure. Does it? I don't know. You know. Could it exist underwater though? How about that mind? You blown? never. You never know. <laughs> no. Yeah. That'd no. be, I, I, I would, we that, should make a fucking episode about it. It's in it into Discovery Channel. Go down to the bottom of the ocean and it's just mermaid Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Just Bigfoot walking around at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> we would have to call him Big Fin because they don't have feet, right? I I don't know. Well, I'm, you big know, head or big say, hand? I don't know. When you say Bigfoot under the water, I'm I'm envisioning this big hairy man just walking on the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> you know, with gills or whatever. Eating I don't know. Giant squid and megalodons. Who knows? I don't know. That'd be friggin' awesome until it can decide to come out of the water. Then yeah. we'd be screwed. We need Godzilla. <laughs> we need to. We need, we need God, somebody Godzilla. call Godzilla. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Godzilla can handle fucking megalodon, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. Do iguanas <laughs> bite? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. If you take ask, them off, yeah. well, he can shoot fire, right? Fucking Godzilla has that that Godzilla <laughs> beam, right? Yeah. In some of the movies, some it depends. Uh, yeah, yeah, it changes. Well, in the Rampage video game, he breathes fire or something, so that's badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the, the whole thing with with Discovery Channel, man, it's just kind of killing my shark buzz. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, there was a there's this other website called Slate dot com. Um, they've got a story about Shark Week, too. It says Shark Week is lying again about Megalodon <laughs> sharks. This is a little lady that was like the Megalodon tooth expert because this one guy sent the guy like a chipped tooth, and she was like, yeah, this cannot be a great white shark, and it's still too um, too new looking because like the older ones look like fossilized rowdy. She's like, this has to be like a off of a shark that's still around. Mm-hmm. And like the guys are all looking at her, and she's like, be careful with that. You know, like for the love of God, don't drop it. <laughs> They're like not trying to drop it or break it or anything. Like I said, I mean things like that have existed in the past, like big dinosaur freaking things. Foot. Oh, that's Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, see, so. and it's it's funny. Uh, that actually reminded me of another Bigfoot story of all things, because for whatever reason, Houston apparently had a whole bunch of Bigfoot stories. <laughs> but uh, apparently, some scientists found like an eaten donut in the middle of like the forest or whatever and they're like it must have been eaten by bigfoot we have bigfoot dna it's like well how do you know (laughs) we've never found a real bigfoot how do you know it's bigfoot dna you know i don't know man they put up shipley's and uh crispy creams everywhere dude i mean it it, it was so absurd they would have found a starbucks cup with like bigfoot hair on it that would have been like a lot you're just like these are like you know actual people trying to play it off like they found something eaten by Bigfoot. It's like, what, what do you mean you found something eaten by Bigfoot? Are, do you think <laughs> like we're we stupid? <laughs> I mean, yeah. well, we found this it's n- just n- a random n- tasty donut. donut just out in the middle of nowhere. What do you mean it's eaten by Bigfoot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he just strolled into the city with, without being noticed, bought like a dozen and then took them back to all his big feet <laughs> friends. <right? laughs> Who knows? <laughs> he's already I mean, eaten like it's four it's and he's on his fifth one. He's like, oh, I can't eat this one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just going to toss it. With some deer or something, a bunch of that shit. Like this. <laughs> You're welcome, nature. You're just yeah. like, oh, some of this stuff is just like, oh, just you know, blows my mind that people can try to. Well, in Houston, they have like those true. like like uh, swamps, not swamps, but like forest area, like East Texas, right? I, 
Like I think over by Beaumont, Texas, they have like wooded areas and shit like that. And yeah. then, like oh, they get probably, the swamps sure. closer to Louisiana. But I mean, I, I you know, I wouldn't want to call it like a hairy ape just on the loose or something. But I mean, I'm sure they've seen something. But I'm I'm pretty sure there's just like some kind of bear or giant monkey or Maybe something. Maybe just a know. random guy walking out and then the camera just playing tricks on you. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a very you Maybe know. Maybe your eyes are playing tricks on me. Yeah. yeah. For I real. mean, I don't know. I mean, it could just be an out of focus guy, just really far away. Really hairy. It's like and or like know. with some like loose fitting yeah hairy I mean, looking clothes on. I don't you know. never know. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's, you know, they keep showing all the pictures where it's like, I have no idea what that is. You know, I mean, I have no idea. If you, just because you have a picture of some random thing doesn't mean it's, you know, actually out there. an actual thing. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. Could be a guy. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. This side here is Slate.com about the shark stuff um, with Megalodon sharks. There's misinformation on this large of a scale matters. Shark Week documentaries are watched by tens of millions of people and they generate almost twice as much Twitter conversation as the infamous Red Wedding episode in the Game of Thrones. Oh, man. Yo, what is that? Do you know the Game of Thrones? I know what it is. I haven't watched it. Oh, man, that the Red Wedding episode. Oy. It's was, was it good, Jimmy? It was upsetting. Really? Yeah. Well, this says that this makes more and reaches more than that, man. As a, marine biologi- as a marine biologist interested in outreach, I speak to hundreds of high school students each year, even earning an award as Florida's Marine Science Educator of the Year. Not once since the Monster Shark Lives aired have I spoken to a group of children and not been asked about Megalodon. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would spend like a million years or something, right? Like thousands of years at least since it was alive. I mean, I'd, right. yeah, I'd have... Yeah. People still talk about Elvis though, right? I mean, today is his birthday, right? Wasn't it? Is today's it? Elvis's birthday or this week's? Well, Elvis's but that, that's a little different though. I mean, that's not... Elvis would actually live. Well, yeah, we're not talking about Elvis being alive. I mean, that that's uh, understandable. But, you know, this is... They're trying to say Megalodons are still around. I don't know. You know, could they be? Sure. I doubt it, you know. Yeah, and don't... Yeah. I would think at this, you know, if it's something that big, I, I would think somebody, you know, would see it. But mm-hmm. I don't, you know... Who knows? Yeah. You know, the ocean's way bigger than we can imagine. Until so. they actually find a body of one and bring it up and like, oh, this this is it. Or get a get like actual video of a real one. You can't say for sure, but. Man, they claim they have footage of the real one. I just showed you guys. Yeah. yeah that's well, but that's, that's obviously but not that's a CG. CG there's, there's another one that's even worse for like sharks, great whites swimming like in some blue or clear water during the day under a ta- under the, the, the cage. And then I don't know where you see like this bigger shark underneath him that looks like a fucking video game, with like bumps all over its back, like an armor bumps on it, and like <laughs> gets this big looking fish, and then he swims off like all awkwardly, you know. Yeah. And they're like, look, look right there, you can see those bumps on his back. That means that he's not a known shark species. <laughs> oh look, here's another evidence clip, man. Let's take a look at this. This is that marine biologist lady that's like in um, marine time um, surveillance with like satellites and shit, trying to disprove this. Uh, theory that this guy had about this i really hate sponsored messages you know that yay ad revenue as that loads up um they find like this guy like zooms in so much on this satellite image of like the coastal waters and there's a pretty what looks like a fucking pretty big shark the shadow and it's like a little curved and it has like the two pectoral fins and then the, the, you can see they stick they claim you can see the dorsal fin even though it's like a flat shot of above it <laughs> so uh, you know, like I guess, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, like oh yeah, yeah, I see it, you know, oh. yeah, because this dude who supposedly knows what he's talking about says it. Well, it's uh, funny because I remember, you know, you point out stuff like that. I mean, you can make people believe anything. I remember seeing a show, what was it, Mind Games? I think it was called, and it's like a they were sitting there, and you know, one guy was pointing at a tree. And he's like, oh yeah, do you see that? weird squirrel or something like that and people were sitting there looking and i mean there's nothing in the tree but eventually people are like yeah yeah i see, I see it. it there I it see is it. right yeah, up there dude. and they're just making shit up we as they go do along that as kids yeah, oh i mean man. yeah i mean it, it's interesting you can make people if you can be convinced Look, here we go here we go really the south believe. atlantic and uh, this is a nasa sh- nasa shot this is that guy colin drake it says his name is he is not a marine biologist he's a fictional character played by an, a- an actor i haven't seen in 2014 version but if, any, if it is anything like the last time, the shocking new evidence will be completely and totally fake. You see the way they zoom in, they zoom in. Yeah, that's so dumb. And then watch, they zoom in again, they say, that's it, that's it right there. That's uh, the fucking Megalodon. What? Yep. Yeah. You see, look, there it is. Can you see the dorsal fin on the back? Yeah, there's, there's a black line. There's no <laughs> way they can get that clear of an image from a NASA satellite photo. They, they show you a satellite of a buses. 
and then watch. They're gonna zoom in the shark to show you how big, like a size comparison. Yeah, that's. I hate whenever they do that. Like this that. is a guy. He's a fucking asshole to yeah. me, dude. And that, the other that, guy. That zoom in and enhance thing. Zoom in and enhance. No, we. It's, yeah. yeah. You see how Photos don't work that, that way. Yeah. yeah. You can. Oh yeah. My God. So, I mean, uh, you know, only way you can get that is vector imaging, and you'd have to have your graphics card, you know, constantly rendering. Like you could do it in a video game, sure, mm-hmm. you know, but an actual yeah. picture, no, you can't yeah. do that. The new evidence clip. You see the way these sharks are? Mm-hmm. They show someone like that, and then they show like this big, like video game looking shark come from b- underneath it and like eat some other big fish and then take off. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, man. I mean, we're gonna have to use some of these clips on there because, man. Yeah, oh we'll man. we'll link to all these that we find on the. Uh, the and then uh, Wesley, right from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. He's got a blog, uh, WillWheaton.net. <laughs> the Discovery Channel owes its viewers an apology. Yeah. And this is kind of tying our whole. Or you guys, though, because I'm not really a Trek fan. I'm a Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. I'm Star but I, I mean, too, Star Wars, but... Star Trek isn't too bad. I mean, I can watch the movies. I have watched all the movies. But I kind of enjoy Star Wars more. Anyways, fucking Star Trek Wars boy right here, Will Wheaton, Wesley, he says, Discovery Channel owes its viewers an apology, man. And, and this guy is a sci-fi superstar. And mm-hmm. for him to come out and say something like that, to me, that means, hell, you know, somebody's got to apologize, dude. They can't keep doing this. If next year Shark Week does anything similar to what they've been doing the last couple of years, I'm going to start a fucking online petition about this shit. I'm going to write an email to somebody, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think because of all this backlash, I think they'll change. They just need to go back to what, I mean, Discovery Channel. Just talk to real scientists about sharks. And you can have, like, the, the crazy shows, like the, the shark attack things, because people like that or, or to see like the but that's it that kind of like got a, to like a more of a f- like they, there's a whole more there's a lot more of them now it's like we don't have any science to talk about so we're going to talk about all these people i mean there's well, a lot of know. people that have been attacked the few times the few times i watched it i saw there were more sciencey channels like i saw like they had a bunch of uh scientists what they were doing is they're trying to see if you could basically kind of put sharks into a coma by basically rubbing their nose. The zombie shark one? Have yeah, you heard that's of that? it. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. And that was really cool because they were sitting there and they were rubbing the sharks and literally they'd go vertical. Yeah, they vertical. say when, you, when they stand the shark up, they say it throws off their, like, their internal GPS, their like, magnetic feel or something, and like they just get catatonic. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. And I was that sitting there was watching cool. it and you just see the shark just slowly go up vertical and then it just sits there. And but the like, name zombie shark, you know what I mean? I mean, it's that's, like, yeah, that's a weird name. All, I mean, yeah. they got they got to make it appeal to people. I, mean, I can understand why, you know, it's like, oh, I wouldn't say zombies, just, you know, but I mean, it was definitely cool. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was cool, cool watching it. Yeah. So I, I think they can salvage it, but it, it'll just take them listening to all these people saying, like, what they're doing wrong and then just go by and fix it they can like i said they can have the crazy things in there like the shark attack and like in step brothers remember like uh they were watching shark week and they're like oh look at that power and they like <laughs> high five and like i still hate you and yeah yeah things like that i mean shark people week brings people together people like seeing like the sharks being sharks attacking seal uh decoy seals and yeah, things like that yeah. so they can have that, but then also throw the science in there so people can at least learn and real stuff instead real of stuff. Yeah. This, this fake, uh, crazy Just stuff. Just keep it about. real, yeah. I mean, have Mythbusters, see if they can find some more shark stuff. Cause, I mean, I enjoyed that special. Like, I saw a special a while ago. I mean, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah. They were, they're, they, it's like one of my favorite shows, Mythbusters. Oh, and I love that show. So, th- so when, they, uh, when, they put the, when they put their, like, all their mind to something, it, it always is, turns out good, so... This last paragraph here on WillWeekend.net says, Discovery Channel is has a rare chance to apologize to his audience this year. The network is running a live after show with guests from the nights performing. Someone from the network should use this platform as an opportunity to address the audience and apologize for deliberately misleading them and recommit to providing the highest quality content this week and every other week out there of the year. Yeah, I agree. They definitely, if I, like I said, I didn't watch any Shark Week this, this, this year, so... I can't say for say it was disappointing, man. Well, yeah, like, from w- the clips you showed me, I agree. If this is if they're passing all those those videos as fact, it's ridiculous. Yeah. There, there's and what bothers me is that like you can obviously tell it's bullshit, and they're, they're sitting there like trying to credit give it credit, you know, like no, no, look, you can see the oh the the one picture they they took of like that shark swimming underneath the the cage. They took they have a still of it. They they freeze frame and there's like this weird, you know, like the the pectoral fin right here in the back of it. It has like a, n- a slit, and there's like a point pointed back on the side of it. And they're like, you know, when I saw that, you know what it reminded me of? And they go back to the other clip with a sperm whale being eaten. 
and they, they freeze it right when it's out of the water like that and he goes look right here and they circle it and there's like the same kind of slit with the no, it's the same one I'm like oh my god dude yeah <laughs> and he's like there's more than one megalodon out there i'm sure of it and oh. Like, oh my god i things like that i mean i understand what they're going for but it's pretty much insulting the audience like they're they're dumb enough to believe this is going to be this is real so that's what i don't like yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a break, guys. Uh, we'll be back in just a few, and maybe we can discuss um, some of the SeaWorld stuff with Blackfish and uh, what they're planning to do with SeaWorld for a few minutes. You guys, um, go grab you guys a cup of ice cream in your underwear and get back to bed so you can listen to the rest of this. And we're back, folks. Um, Uh-oh. We just wrapped up our uh, our discussion on the Megalodon series and how that's kind of Bigfoot discrediting and all sorts of yeah. weird the, crap. The, the mermaid like and the Bigfoot yeah. Megalodon shows fake discrediting Discovery Channel. Yeah, fake yeah. stuff making cool stuff not cool anymore. Yeah, uh, man, yeah, yeah, I, agree. Agree. I like that. Yeah, I like that hashtag cool shit not cool no more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, hash brown? No hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, moving along, we want to discuss something else about the sea. Um, Last year, right, is when that documentary came out? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Last yeah, that year, sounds about right. Either last year or the year before, but pretty, yeah, recently. Within the recent ish. past, uh, the documentary Blackfish came out about the, the, the one trainer who had gotten pulled into the water and uh, killed by a killer well named Tikitum or Tikium? It was something like that. Something weird, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I think it was like multiple, multiple, like, violent behavior. Yeah, he had done bad shit before and they had mm-hmm. just transferred him over to another sea world instead of mm-hmm. dealing with it because he was supposedly like the one of the biggest whales they had mm-hmm. and um i also heard that um some of the whales at other parks are like his offspring so you know there's kind of like a yeah like they like they separate them like yeah. right after they're born and things like that yeah so they I, can all te- pr- properly do probably do shit like that yeah i didn't watch i don't like seeing things that'll bum me out so i don't i didn't watch it i really like sea world too but i know people <laughs> that have and kind of told me about it yeah i kind of see i i don't mind it but but yeah i don't like watching documentaries that'll just like make me sad well you know the whole thing was that this guy was like this whale was supposedly being really really aggressive to uh, trainers and actually killed this one maybe he killed that had to kill another one i'm not sure about that but the whole documentary starts off about that stuff and then um it goes into like how the parks treat their animals and i think at that point is when like organizations like PETA and like all these other like marine time mammal activists um came out of the woodwork and used that as a platform to say oh sea world you're really fucking everything up and the whales hate you all and these can't you see they're trying to kill everybody <laughs> yeah. kill all humans but um uh, the the thing that I don't get is that I mean Sea World it, didn't it start off as kind of like a re- save rescue research kind of thing you know I'm not sure I, I think don't. parts of it are but you know I I mean I don't know you know I've, I've never really thought about it I think that's how they had started and then they evolved into like an actual show you know like a park with a show there yeah to like um, show that you know that these creatures are kind of to like get people interested in these creatures somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I believe when they started, that's what they would do. They would find whales in trouble, and they would rescue them, bring them into captivity, and then help nurse them back to health. And after a while, they evolved into, like, this whole theme park kind of show thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, that's probably how it is. But I, as of right now, I think they're more of a business than anything. I, I think they're more entertainment s- side of the business. Not, not m- I don't think I – don't, I don't know if they're doing much research. I wonder, maybe, I wonder. maybe some research, but – I think their main thing is making money and getting people into the concession stands and things like Probably that yeah, now, nowadays. Get people into the park. Well, the reason I bring it up is because this last week we had a story um, about SeaWorld wanting to renovate their three parks. I think it's Orlando, San Diego, and San Antonio. I think so, yeah. Something they're like they're going to do renovations in order to make the, the, the animals... I guess the enclosure, yeah, the yeah. enclosures more um, habitat friendly, more bigger. So I think yeah. what they're saying twice as big or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. e- they're gonna expand it, but they're supposed to make it like more animal friendly, like with some beaches for like the the dolphins and like the uh, sea lions and stuff like that, like so like West Coast beaches. Um, so they're trying to like they're trying to make it more like a habitat for the animals, and you know give them more space to like run around. 
And one of the arguments that everybody says is that the whales can dive to, you know, uh, 1,500 feet below the sea, the surface, and they said these enclosures are only going to be 50 feet deep or, you know, f like, so, um, I'm not sure how deep, but it's not going to be nearly as close to what the whale can actually dive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that was one of the things. Um, but I, I, I kind of, do you guys think they're doing this just to get back on like people's good side about they're trying to be more eco-friendly? Sure. I, I think they they said, that I remember in the story, they say they aren't. But of course, it's all PR. Yeah, of course. For the backlash, like yeah. stocks dropping. Yeah, Blackfish, that documentary, I think it said it like dropped their stock like 30%. 33 or, some, or something like that. Yeah, yeah it was a like, yeah, like, huge chunk. Yeah, so of course, whatever they do to make the treatment of the animals look better is, of course, because of that documentary or yeah, because of the backlash from that documentary. Well, I also heard they're supposed to be giving $10 million to marine mammal research. So hopefully this will like get them back into like their first mission of actually trying to like you know do something or make something of these animals, not I mean, just have them fucking show you know. Still kind of a PR stunt, but at least it's a you know it's a step in the right direction. There's good shit coming out of it. Yeah, right? at least you know you're like yes, it is a PR stunt, but at least it is something that is you know. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's. I think the hardcore people that are against them will only be satisfied if like they release the animals or yeah. something like that because um i you kind of understand because there's no way an animal in captivity is ever going to be this get what they can get in nature i mean that's probably well, i mean the, think yeah. about it um uh, they say the like um dogs evolved from wolves wolves gave up um their freedom to roam around in order to get a meal every day by mm -hmm. hanging around with the people and they gave the people fed them and they gave the people protection or like alerted them mm -hmm. when something was wrong so I mean I I don't I'm not saying that orca whales are going to become like man's best friend next best friend you know but but um, I'm just saying that there's a give and a take there you know they're doing their shows and we're feeding them they're obviously healthy they've gotten all their shots they're not diseased you know well so, I mean <laughs> it's it's the thing it, in that documentary it shows them being like severely mistreated so yes we're feeding them and well, stuff I mean, but we're like, also like keeping yeah. them in like a like a like a very small enclosure for like weeks on end and things like so we could very treat them better but you know, i mean it's, almost, yeah. it's like bad parent syndrome you know there are bad parents out there so i mean i'm sure there's trainers out there that treat their animals like shit that's but you know that's one of those things though is when you look at it though when you, when you look at how we treat dogs dogs can walk around pretty much you know wherever they want i mean yeah you may keep them to you know confined to the yard house. yeah but do you still taking on walks don't you you go outside and or go let them outside i let them in the back and i throw the sticks so we can fetch for like a few minutes and then i bring them back in <laughs> so I don't like to take him on walks because he takes off, man. He doesn't like water. When I take him to a woodlawn lake, he'll like well, walk around and like he'll just. I'll get close to the water and he'll just stop, like uh uh. <laughs> and then when I'm watering the hose in the backyard, he like goes and sits under somebody because he knows I won't with them. You know. I mean, that's what <laughs> leashes are for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but he doesn't like leashes. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well yeah. that's on you then. <laughs> but uh, uh, I feel bad now. I'm gonna have to oh. get him some kind of harness and walk his <laughs> ass. To get the dog whisperer <laughs> in there. And yeah, I'm gonna get him a little kid harness and take him around with me to the mall. But when you look at it, I mean, like you know, you, you compare backpack. you compare them being in these enclosures to like you know just sticking a dog in you know like a pen or whatever you know like one of the little crates or whatever. Yeah. Like you can do it for a little bit to keep the dog in the crate so it's not running around eating and you know shitting on the carpet and stuff like that yeah that's fine for a little bit but you know there's the assumption that you're gonna let the dog out but uh with you know with like the whales and stuff like that it's like yeah no they're pretty much kept in the crate all the time you know that's about it it's well, like I mean, a big giant fishbowl pretty much or it's like so, you know. so would you guys be more inclined to have SeaWorld release all the whales or make uh, a place on the coast somewhere cold obviously because the killer whales like colder water i'm assuming you know, should we should SeaWorld be like based out of Greenland, you know, and like have only a few, you know, places around the world that they can actually have the whales in the ocean water? I would think if they can do a park on like, you know, ocean coast and stuff like that and somehow figure out a way to enclose a much bigger area. I mean, that that would be a huge undertaking. That was a plot of Jaws 2, wasn't it? Or Jaws 3? Where they had that I theme didn't park? I not see any of them. I, oh my I've, god. I've only seen the first one. Yeah, I that would be a I very think, good. I think it would be a step in the right direction. Rather, you know, I I don't know cuz the issue is is you also get, you know, it, it's a company and they got to figure out how to make money and that's, you know, that's going to mm -hmm. cost probably a lot more than they want to spend to do that. Yeah, I think what they did just now, like their recent kind of things that they're doing are pretty much what they're going to do. I don't think they'd ever do that. 
because of the challenges that comes with that kind of stuff. What they're doing now kind of we'll throw we'll we'll double their their size, we'll add things in there. Stuff, yeah. We'll 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 throw some pocket change at a at a research place and Hopefully that'll placate you enough to get our stock up, and then we won't care about it anymore. Yeah, I mean, until they're... Blackfish Two comes out or something, something like that, and then we'll just go through it again. They're just looking at the bottom line. They're like, yeah. "Well, we can spend this much money, get our stock back up, and be done with it." So, I don't know. So I, the whales will never be set free until until SeaWorld gets enough pressure to close down. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, they're, maybe they're, if they're sued or something and lose the case or something like that, I don't think they'll ever get rid of the animals because, I mean, it's their iconic mascot killer whale thing. Well, the Southwest Airlines dropped the 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 sponsorship they had where they had that Shamu plane, remember? They're no yep. longer going to do that. They've had that for, like, years now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, uh, yeah SeaWorld lost a lot of money, so they're, they're go- trying to go in the cheapest, best direction. But... I mean, okay, it's a big company, so I mean, they're doing what big companies do. Where they're I mean, throwing when a, a problem, lot of money, they throw at a it. lot of money and try to try to make it just enough to appease people. I think That's the it's, idea, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. You know, it's just an interesting dilemma where it's like I, I I don't know how to fix the problem. You know, I have no idea what a killer whale needs. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. That's not you know an animal that I can just you know go to a pet store and buy. So I mean I I, I have no idea what they need. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, that's kind of a hard question on what's the best thing to do, you know do for. Yeah. I, you know I, I can imagine just you know having a twice as big cage with you know, a, a, you know a, a tire or whatever whatever enrichment you know whatever enrichment activities are for whales. I I can't imagine that being you know the best solution mm-hmm. I, it, maybe it's a it's better than what it is now i mean but is it you know is it a good full-time solution probably not yeah i'd say probably the best solution is release the animals but they've been in captivity so long i don't think they'll survive it's, out in yeah. the, the wild that well that would probably appease a lot of people maybe probably make other people angry because now they're probably like a dead whale or something like like it'd probably be a big story, and they'd follow the whale, and the whale will die. There'd be ways. You, you, there, it'd be a process. It wouldn't be just yeah. like, just open the gate. All right, bye, whale. Well, good luck. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's not how you yeah, release an true. animal into the Jaws wild. Jaws three. <laughs> they I've tried only to seen make the a, first like one. A, they made a theme park at the coast in the ocean, and how did it turn out bad? They uh they forgot they had the gates in the water that they had left open on accident, and Jaws swam up in there. So then when they finally closed the cage. Jaws was trapped in the ocean area of the park. <laughs> so they, uh, so that's why SeaWorld, and it supposedly says right here that it happened at SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think SeaWorld will ever do that. Yeah. Well, it was pretty cool because, you know, hearing about something like that, uh, for my sister's wedding, we went to Playa del Carmen, uh, which is on the Yucatan Peninsula, just a little bit south of uh, uh, Cancun. Yeah, there you Cancun. go, Cancun. And... Uh, and we went to this one really cool it was kind of like a water park deal and it was literally like on the coast and stuff like that so they had some area you know it was just like some natural areas cut out. i mean they didn't have any sharks or anything in, that, sure? in there well i mean like no i don't think so <laughs> i don't there know any shark attacks while you were there no okay, I don't, well, as far as i know cool. i don't know i mean but uh i mean it was real cool i mean like they had like basically a water park kind of built just off the coast i mean it was really it was way better than any of our water parks it was really cool well, I don't know. Have you been to Schluterbahn? Oh, I have been to Schluterbahn, but I'm saying just like it, it had more, you know, it was natural bigger. beauty. Okay. And okay. it's like, you know, because you're like, okay, there's beach. And then, the, you know, you can go and swim in like the little river and stuff that they had, like Very a little nice. man-made river. It was really cool. I mean, it was. Playa the what? Playa del Carmen. Carmen. I'll have to check that out, Jimmy. Maybe Todd Pod, send us your money, Pokes, so we can throw a trip and hmm. make sure Foster ain't full of shit. <laughs> we got pictures. I mean, oh, well, so. that'll work. That'll Photoshop. Work. You Photoshop them. Yeah, they mean, they, you, dude, you, they megla- just, you megalodon those yeah, pictures. Yeah, you just megalodon the hell out of those, right? You got video of you coming down the slide, but you're just like sitting on a green screen. Well, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't really slides and stuff. It was more of just like, you know, like little pools and stuff like that off oh, the side cool. of the, you know. Like they had like little areas of, you know, the ocean kind of blocked off and stuff. I mean, it was really cool. So what do you guys think happens with SeaWorld? You think they're going in the right direction? You think they should just release think, all the animals? I think they did the best thing that they could do right now, but it's not enough. I think most people aren't going to be satisfied. It's going to satisfy enough, and it'll be okay. People are going to go to the parks again. Um, but that was my next question. What do you think? The, what do you think the, the future holds for Sleepwell now? 
Uh, if they, you know, as long if, if if this is a first step in a process or something like that, I think they could probably fix it. But if this is the the end game or whatever, then no, and I, I don't think it's. I think it's just gonna, you're going to see a, a cycle again where it's like they're going to get more shit and then. Do you think yeah. they'll eventually have to close the parks down and release their animals? Probably not. Yeah, that'd be. I think I, that'd I, be. I have a hard. It's, it's Anheuser Busch. Yeah, okay. it is. That's, that, dude. that's n- they're not going to run out of money anytime yeah, uh, soon. Uh, uh. So I really have a hard time seeing. I don't know. It depends. I mean, if all of a sudden nobody ever goes to it anymore, then yeah, they'll close down the parks because that's a huge cash thing. You know, you don't want to sit there and just waste all your cash on a theme park that nobody's like, going to. Like nickel beer night at SeaWorld, <laughs> just get everybody packed in there and hammered. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean that that'd be all you could do to try mm-hmm. to make back some money. You know. Yeah. Well, that that Halloween thing I've been to a couple times, and that is really cool, really fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, I like SeaWorld. Uh, I like it too. The one here has the great, great white roller coaster thing. Yes, that's my favorite roller coaster. You of, got that under of the theme park. You can see the sharks too, right? Probably. I think yeah. they've had the penguin thing. I've been through the penguin thing. Yeah. It's like an yeah. escalator, but then it goes like straight. It doesn't go up or down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, walking. Uh, yeah, moving, yeah. Floor. Moving, 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 moving floor. Moving floor. Whatever, yeah. like that's the what moonwalk called. machine. That's yeah. what I call it. <laughs> they have those in airports too. Oh yeah, I seen that that what is it that that uh, viral video of those guys like pretending to be a bicycle and yeah. like going through <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so SeaWorld gonna be around still. You guys yeah. figure? I yeah, I, yeah. I, I think they'll survive this. Hopefully they this have is just so much money that it's like they're they're just gonna try to throw money at the issue and until try Blackfish to, Two some, comes out. Until everybody yeah. forgets, yeah. Until another trainer gets killed and or maybe it's an audience member hope not, or something. Yeah. I've I've actually touched a killer whale. I, really? Yeah. One of my my dad it's had supposed to feel like rubber, right? Yeah, it's like cold, rubbery feel. Like uh, dolphins yeah. are pretty much are similar. Yeah, all those kind of animals. So yeah, badass. I was like, I'll 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 get you out of here. And, I, <laughs> and then I had a whole free willy thing. It was crazy. Oh, shit, really? <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that in a different episode. Was he talking to you like <laughs> through your mind, like get me out of here, Jimmy? <laughs> save me, Jimmy. Save they me. do awful things to me at night. <laughs> no. hey, give me all your money. He told you he was from the moon and he went to Mexico and put him on a rocket to the moon. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that South Park episode? Where the <laughs> <laughs> I may have, but the I don't guys remember are at it. South Park and Stan is looking in the, the through the glass and the whale's looking right at him. And then the guys that work there are fucking with Stan and they're like, Oh, you should get me out of here, little boy. <laughs> so him and the kids get together. They end up getting him a truck and put him on this truck and they haul ass to Mexico because the Mexico builds a rocket to help them send the. the oh, he no. tells them he's from the moon. His name is Welziak or something. <laughs> so these kids, these kids with some help to the Mexicans, strap him to a rocket, shoot him to the moon. And at the end of the episode, they're like, bye, Welziak, we did it. And there's all these cops and all their parents around. And then, like, the when the credits are rolling, they show a dead whale on the moon like yeah. that with a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude. South Park is awesome. Like, those, guys, those guys are like, dude, I didn't think he would honestly do it. We always mess with kids like that. You know, they're the first ones that could act- that actually did something about it. <laughs> South Park, nice. Good Anyways, one, man, uh, any last words on the mermaids, the shark week, or the blackfish saga? It's like two companies that got to get their acting you know, yeah. together. I mean, they got to figure something out. We'll yeah. have to see yeah. what happens. Good good call. That's the, Some like changes. The you you'll see some changes, but... I think Who Discovery Channel's in a lot deeper shit than I think, fucking SeaWorld is. I, I think Fisher knows about this. That's, I know. It's like in his name. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> underwater can we you brethren. We, can we call you Whalesiak? Whalesiak. <laughs> Whalesiak and send you to the moon and the Mexican <laughs> rocket. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that part. <laughs> We had you to Mexican rocket. I was going to say, yeah, Mexican. Uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. Maybe American rocket now. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. We got you now. All right, 10-4. Spots just come out of the closet. I'm surrounded by racists. <laughs> yeah, I'm not racist. I hate everybody the same. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't hate Mexicans. I live in San Antonio. It's <laughs> kind of an idiot to hate Mexicans in San Antonio. Well, my thoughts... Discovery Channel's got to clean up its act. They gotta, they gotta do something right before next season Shark Week, and then make sure next season Shark Week is gonna kick some serious ass. Because I'm really not planning on watching it if it's gonna be bullshit again. What do you think, Jimmy? I agree. Same. Yeah, we've said it th- this whole episode. They're gonna, they have to make some changes. Lis- listen to your audience. They're the people that are m- making your living for you. So. And SeaWorld, good job stepping up to the plate for this stuff, but we could, we all know there's a little more that could be done. We don't know what. Don't build a park on the coast because that's when Jaws shows up. Maybe <laughs> the Megalodon with a Sasquatch riding him, right? Yeah, and Thor's hammer or yeah, something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Bad shit happens. Don't do that. But 
you know, step up your game to SeaWorld and Discovery Channel, man. We're going to hashtag this shit all night. SeaWorld and, and Discovery Channel and see what the hell we can <laughs> get going. But anyways, I'm Patrick. I'm Jimmy. I'm Fisher. And that's or this what, Whalesack or whatever? Whalesiac. Wh- Whalesiac for today. Whalesiac. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Todd Pod guys, and we'll thank you guys for listening, and hope you guys tune in next week. Bye. Peace. Bye.